By the power vested in me, I now pronounce you husband and wife. <laughs> wrote in the yearbook, he wrote in the... But I got scared. This is the type of love that I want. I'm so <laughs> in my life. So sorry. I want to be the one by your side. It won't always be easy. But I want to do whatever it takes to make this work. The writers. So that's what yes. you do when you love someone. Yes. This could not be more what perfect. Do you think of our new contract. I'm gonna stop here before I drown myself in tears and wine and sorrow. <sighs> Get into the review. Hey guys, what's good? No, what's really good? Today in Molly's world, where we hop into the director's seat, sip on our treats, and get into the, the real good, romantic, loving deets. We are just sad, but sad in a good way because this movie was just beautiful. It was just amazing. So without further ado, let's get into the movie review of To All The Boys, Always and Forever. So of course, you know, I like to start off with my actors, give them their round of applause. Lana Condor, Noah Centineo, oh, 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 oh. That is my, that's my man. I don't know who LJ is, I'm sorry, I'm gonna betray her like her best friend because that man says everything right. I know it's a fairy tale, not a fairy tale, but a fictional story, but there could not be a more perfect person <laughs> besides Peter like <sighs> I love the fact that we got to see Trina more in this movie and also the older sister comes back which you know is she's played by Janelle Parrish in the previous movie they hinted to her Korean culture and her upbringing and her mom and everything else and I feel like the this movie kind of tied it all in completely where they actually went to Korea and Knowing that Lana Condor and the other actresses that were there were like actually in Korea and they got to spend time there just made watching the experience even more thrilling and enjoying because I realized that like they, you could see they were actually having fun in the places that they were at and like just you could just see that they felt like a family and it felt like a genuine connection amongst the characters and the cast rather than it just being a role that they were playing. I felt like LJ was always missing that connection with a motherly figure. She did have her older sister, but I felt like she was missing that connection with someone that taught her the perspective of a relationship or love from the woman's side. Cause she got her father, but she's accepted that her mom has left, but at the same time, she now has Trina in her life to give her that kind of like motherly, influence. LJ is now a senior. She's getting her life together and one of the main conflicts was that she's about to go to college. Now, take it from me, LJ made the right choice because <laughs> if it was up to me, I probably would have ended up going to Berkeley or Stanford or somewhere to follow, follow the man of my dreams. But I'm glad she made the right choice for herself. Her friends were telling her that you should follow your heart and not necessarily follow, follow your heart in terms of who you love, but follow your heart in terms of what you love and what makes you feel inspired. And I feel like, yes, she did love Peter, but choosing to go to Berkeley or to Stanford was not for her. She was making it work some way, somehow for her and finding what she could do best in that situation, but it wasn't for her. It was so ironic that she experienced that openly freeing situation with Jen, who also got accepted to NYU because in the last movie, we recognized 
and also LJ, that her and Jen have what they call Jong, which is kind of like a bond that necessarily can't be broken, that as much as they fight and they distance themselves from each other, they're always going to find a way back to each other. And I find, like, it was kind of foreshadowing to me that eventually her and Jen will be back on the same page or that they will end up being really close friends again. And I hear we have both of them going to NYU together. We got to see more of the little sister actually growing up because now she has like this little crush on some Korean boy she met, which is so adorable. But we get to see her learning about relationships. The father got to remarry. Something that LJ said, she said, love is actually about the moments when no one is watching. And I feel like that message carried out through the entire movie because we see things that Peter went through on his own and we see things that LJ went through on her own where it's kind of like, damn, like if people could actually see how I feel about you, how I defend you, how I pick up for you without you actually seeing that, it's kind of like you recognize how much that person means to the other person. I don't know if anyone noticed this. There was a beginning when Peter was sitting on a bed and she was debating whether to text him about not getting into Stanford or not. He sat on the bed and he kind of like quoted Pride and Prejudice. And then it's funny that she actually took the book again to New York. And then while she was sitting on the bus or the train station, somewhere she was, she saw a woman reading the same Pride and Prejudice book. Now, the main idea or the main concept of Pride and Prejudice, to me, was choosing someone that you genuinely love. It was picking someone that you know you're loving because you love them. It was picking someone not necessarily because of what they have to offer you, but because you, you simply want to choose that person you want to be with that person which inevitably brings us to the end of the movie which i don't want to get to the end yet but that concept comes back again towards the end of the movie in terms of picking people and choosing people peter i don't know how he does it but he says the right things i've never seen someone say the right things like, all the time. But the only time he said the wrong thing, and I was like, God dang, you even give my girl a chance. Like, she really was, like, trying to help you was the one time, like, they broke up. Like, he didn't even give my good, my good sis LJ a chance to explain herself. She's like, damn, I'm gonna miss you. I'm already missing you. Like, we're not going to college together. Like, I planned this whole thing out. And now you're trying to tell me that we're not gonna be together? Like, yeah. I'm just trying to spend as much time as I have with you left. Because honestly, truly, we don't know what's going to happen. But I'm letting you know, I'm still going to, I'm still going to choose you. I still want you. But I feel like the reason why Peter acted the way he acted was because of abandonment issues. And I love the underlying conflicts that aren't like necessarily highlighted. Like, oh, I have abandonment issues, or oh, this is my problem. I love when things are like that because you can clearly see that he has abandonment issues when the moment when LJ and Peter were sitting in the car together, he explained to LJ that he's upset because he's upset with himself because he misses his dad. And it's not like, unfortunately, in LJ's case, where it's kind of like she just misses her mom because her mom passed away. It's like he misses his dad and his dad is alive. And he's mad because his, he misses his dad because he, he has the opportunity to speak to his dad. He has a chance to connect with his dad, but his dad is not the one connecting with him. His dad left him. Or in that case, he felt as though his dad left him because his dad, I guess, cheated on his mom and ended up having a whole separate family. His dad was saying to him, Peter, I need you to understand, I did not leave you. You are not the one that got abandoned. Yes, I can admit that I was not a father, but me leaving that house or leaving the relationship was not me leaving you, which again, pushes Peter to recognize, hey, I pushed you away because I thought, oh my gosh, if this person is going to keep distance away from me, I don't handle distance well. Obviously, his father, distant from him, I don't handle distance well. So you telling me you're going to be this far away from me, I know it's not going to work because it didn't work with my father and my family, is not, my family is not doing it so well. Apparently, LJ didn't remember the first time she met Peter either. So what Peter wrote inside of the yearbook was that moment and I felt like it was so cute. 
It was adorable because they were at like a spell and bee and stuff like that. From the first movie, when they first met, they had like a contract. LJ made Peter sign a contract about being like his fake, her fake boyfriend. And again, now Peter wrote out his own contract saying that, hey, this is how I met you. This is how things are going to go. I'm always going to choose you beginning, middle and end. If you choose me beginning, mid beginning, middle and end. And LJ was like, why not? Like, I'm here for all of this, so let's sign the contract. And they were like, deal. And then they kissed, and I was just like, I want to choose somebody beginning, middle, and end. I want somebody to choose me beginning, middle, and end. But the song choices, again, in this movie, I'm still obsessed with moral of the story from part two. But this one, immediately, as I heard, beginning, middle, and end, downloaded it. There was another song in there that I recognized in my head by Peter in that moment with the lyrics you felt like they were in love but the entire song is based off of this person overthinking and they're overthinking to the point where they're forgetting that the person that they love is standing right in front of them literally the song says you're in my head and I keep on forgetting that you're here instead like you haven't left me yet so why am I not embracing this moment perfect 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 Song choice. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to drink for this part because when I tell you I was in my feelings, I mean I was in my feelings. It was the very end of the movie where they were laying on each other's chest, and she she was like, "Oh, now we have a meet cute moment." Oh, that warmed my heart so 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 much. But it's what she said after, like the narration saying that life is about making choices and we never know what's going to happen. But the most important choices are the ones we make when we choose the people that we love. And I'm always going to choose you, Peter, always and forever, beginning, middle and end. But... She related it back all the way back to the first movie. Love when they do that. Recycling, and they recycle it in brilliant ways because, yes, she said the best thing about being 3,000 miles apart from each other is that you get to write love letters. If that isn't genius and brilliant and just cohesive in it all, I don't know what is. Like, that was the perfect way to tie a bow on that. But in the back of my mind, I still want to know what happens or what's going to happen during college or what's going to happen four years later. Because I just, I just want to see the love. I just want to see them together on the screen. Always. That's just what love should be. It should be unconditional. And if you find that someone... You should not let them go. Also, I don't know if you peeped my makeup, but it's the colors of the movie. Just saying, just, just saying. If you guys enjoyed this review, you know, getting into the details with me, falling in love, getting your heart broken, yes. Feel free to scroll down, hit the subscribe button, then hit the notification bell so you get notifications from when I post. Please feel free to leave your love and your comments down below because I'm lonely and I will be spending Valentine's Day alone. So if you're out there somewhere with your loved one, make sure you hug them, kiss them, and choose them beginning, middle, and end. I love you guys. Until next time. Mwah.